At the outset, I would like to thank the NPTEL authorities as well as the Indians of Science authorities for giving me an opportunity to present uh, the course on ground improvement. It is in fact a video course. Uh, before I just commence the course, I would like to introduce myself so that you have an idea of what exactly uh, I have been doing all these years and also how I am introduced this subject of ground improvement. In fact, I have done my doctorate in uh, geotechnical engineering in Indians of Science in 1991. Subsequently, I was in Central Road Institute. In fact, the area of ground improvement is an important uh, area in ground uh, in geotechnical engineering, where when the infrastructure requirements are huge, when the infrastructure needs to spread out in large areas, which where the soil is very weak, you need to improve the soil so that uh, it can take care of a lot of loads and other things. So, in this context, the ground improvement subject is quite important and uh, I was in CRRI which is called uh, which is in fact the Central Road Institute is a national laboratory in India. Subsequently, I was in uh, Purdue University, then I joined back Indians of Science, after that I was in Germany. Uh, subsequently, again I came back to institute, I have been teaching this subject of ground improvement and also geosynthetics for a very long time. And now when uh, NPTEL asked me to offer this subject on particularly the video course, I thought I should just offer uh, this course uh, which has a lot of practical inputs uh, and then it has a great deal of effect on uh, use of uh, uh, the, uh, the improvement of the infrastructure in India. So, with this small introduction, I would like to just introduce you to what I would like to uh, present in this course. Uh, in this module, what I would like to talk about is that I would like to highlight to you the need for ground improvement, uh, what type of uh, soils we have, what type of uh, problematic soils we have and what are the emerging trends in improvement. Uh, the need for ground improvement is something that is very uh, vital, one should understand this because uh, the bigger infrastructure were particularly roads, buildings, bridges and many more that you see what you call a physical infrastructure has to be founded on soil. This soil properties are something that very they are very unique and uh, like they have some engineering properties like shear strength, consolidation, permeability, compaction, certain engineering features like if you have a a building which is of high rise building, it is supposed to exert lot of loading on the soil and the soil should be able to take care of it. So, when the soil cannot take care of it, then we say that its strength properties are not adequate or we say that the it can go large uh, settlements like you must have heard of uh, buildings sinking into the soil. So, this is essentially because of that, that is what we say that uh, the mechanical properties are not adequate mechanical properties I mean in this is that the strength properties are not sufficient. So, the settlements are going to be larger. So, when we say in this uh, fashion there is a need to improve these properties and this where the ground improvement techniques come into picture. We do certain modifications to the ground whether mixing soil, mixing some with some additives or putting some inclusions into the system which will make them to take care of the extra loading or the lot, lot of loading that is expected to come and we say that the mechanical properties can be improved using the uh, ground improvement techniques. This is in a conventional sense for example, many places in India they have large growth infrastructure and people are looking at this area in a very um, considerable manner because this area is supposed to impact in a large scale in infrastructure development. So, we say that when mechanical properties are not adequate, we use this ground improvement techniques. There are some soils which have swelling and shrinkage like we call, call, call them as black cotton soils. In fact, uh, the cotton is grown in this uh, area in these soils and uh, the soils exhibit lot of swelling like they swell a lot, they take water and then swell a lot and also shrink a lot when uh, they uh, when there is an atmospheric uh, uh, conditions like temperatures are going to be high you have a, um, a dry season. So, it, they shrink a lot. So, some soils they have lot of variations in uh, water content like they swell a lot they shrink a lot and if you have a building 
which is on them then the problem is that uh, it gets totally uplifted and also it have a lot of cracks you have you have seen lot of cracks in buildings pavements and dams and many structures this is a standard uh, problem that in uh, expense soils one one has uh, particularly the areas in india that like uh, whole of deccan plateau has expensive soils chennai has expensive soils we call them expensive soil because they tend to expand but they also shrink that's one problem then we have what you call uh, collapsible soils which are again another type of soils then uh, which are which have a tendency to collapse because of certain conditions then we have soft soils what is called the soil is very soft in nature so for example kerala and andhra all coastal areas have lot of soft soils and uh, when you want to construct big uh, port structures definitely this uh, soft soil improvement is required without which uh, it's very difficult to uh, increase the capacity of the even the port this is one important area and uh, organic soils is something that is again another component in soil mechanics where certain materials because they have a lot of organic uh, matter into that and because of the poor drainage conditions uh, the organic soils are also quite tricky like marshy areas are something standard in uh, many places and uh, when we add or treat the soils in some form these soils become usable like you know one can construct uh, roads on them or buildings on them uh, this is only possible by means of ground improvement techniques then we have what you call sandy soils and gravelly deposits this is another peculiar problem because in some areas we expect some cohesion uh, to have uh, in uh, soil mechanics but then if the sands are there are pure sands and gravelly deposits then it's not easy to handle them so we try to Im improve some interaction properties like we add some cementation into sands and gravels so that they behave as a coherent mass uh, that is possible by ground improvement techniques then there are certain cast deposits like it's a geological formation where uh, some soils they have a particularly uh, a tendency for sinkhole formation like the uh, when contact with water there is a cavity formation like cavities do form and definitely it's a big risk like if you're trying to construct a particular structure and after one year there is a sink formation there then the whole uh, the structure will collapse so it's a big problem then there is another thing that what you call nowadays in india you know the scarcity of lands is there like you want to construct uh, particularly in urban areas a uh, lot of um, real estate because of the real estate issues um you would like to use every piece of available land in some form or other and construct the big buildings or structures to make the best out of the investment that you have made so people are looking towards dumps and sanitary landfills like particularly the waste material that is collected in one place dumped in some areas and then finally after 10 years you would like to feel uh, feel like using it then the problem is that it's not easy by because this soy these dumps are something very tricky like we know that they are bad as uh, odors are uh, there then you have lot of settlements you have lot of uh, biodegradation material into that it's not easy to handle them so how do you construct foundations on them is something very critical that one needs to understand so here the ground needs to be improved the dumps and the sanitary landfills in fact the dumps are what you call waste material uh, dumps but then sanitary landfills is something a scientific uh, landfilling is done in some places of course in india it is just taking up in a, a big way in the recent years with the minister of environment and forest uh, uh, vigilance and uh, but still even the landfills after some 20 30 years when all the landfill gases and leachate uh, is uh, completely uh, removed then the landfill becomes inactive then you would like to place or use that area for uh, some uh, construction of some buildings so you should be careful because uh, these uh, landfill materials are again very really complex as i just mentioned now and one needs to really stabilize them in a proper manner before you use them for engineering applications another important point is the use of dredged materials particularly in berthing operations the areas are uh, in which uh, these uh, ships move the soils are very soft the dredging becomes a very um, uh, big task and then when you try to stabilize them um, even dump them the dredged material in some form they do not create much nuisance 
So, one can use some sort of additives in uh, stabilizing the, some of the dredged materials and uh, see that they do not really create troubles. The other important thing is uh, nowadays a lot of hazardous materials are there, the hazardous materials are like they are supposed to be toxic, there could be many categories in which uh, the uh, they can be ignited, they can have lot of uh, issues which are in fact harmful when um, uh, some weak or uh, when we get in touch with them. So, these hazardous materials need to be uh, really immobilized in the sense they should not move from one place to another. So, we have some sort of techniques where you try to add some additives so that uh, the permeability of the so whole soil is something very low and the movement of this hazardous materials uh, whether in the solid form or liquid form is minimum. Then we have uh, what you call old mine pits particularly when mining is complete the area has to be used for some purposes and then the, the problem with mines is that they have lot of holes they are not really properly handled in the initial stages. But when you want to use mine pits there could be lot of uh, other issues like slope stability and uh, bearing capacity and uh, some other, other geotechnical issues. One needs to make use of the ground improvement techniques to see that the mine pits have been stabilized and one can construct proper uh, structures which you want in this. Actually the beauty of the ground improvement techniques is that you need to specify what you need and the techniques are evolved to see that the you are able to achieve that requirements in a economic way and in a uh, satisfactory manner. That is what is called um, the ground improvement uh, techniques, the advantages are well known and uh, what I would like to show you to you is that a few examples. In fact, why how, what is that problem with the soils and how do you understand them? In fact, you see the leaning tower of Pisa is in fact, it is a classical example of uh, geotechnical engineering practice and the ground, ground improvement techniques. Uh, this is in Italy and uh, you know it has right from 1400 um, AD, it has some tilt into this because of the uh, differential settlement that the uh, area ha the uh, soil beneath the foundation has, but then they wanted that they should not fail at the same time it should just not be erect also because once this leaning tower of Pisa has become an attraction in uh, the western world and if it uh, if it is straightforward then it has it will lose all the charm. So, again if it collapses again is another danger it is a problem. So, people want a some sort of inclination where it can be stable and uh, people have used lot of ground improvement techniques right from uh, the beginning stages of its uh, construction particularly in the recent years. Uh, so, when uh, the tower showed lot of uh, inclination because of the dewatering, people have geotechnical engineers in fact have stepped in and then showed that you can have a main you can have a proper inclination and then see that it also does not collapse and also becomes uh, maintain its status as a tourist attraction with the tolerable tilt. So, you see the leaning tower of Pisa here which is something very interesting. Here another example Kandla Portus building after the 2001 earthquake. This is another classic example this is also inclined. This is inclined because the soil below that is essentially a sandy soil and uh, the soil the sandy soils have the tendency to get liquefied under the presence of due to the presence of the earthquakes or the uh, occurrence of the earthquakes. What happens is that the earthquakes have uh, it is an impact loading such that uh, the, there is no time for uh, dissipation of pore pressures like the pressure is not dissipated. So, what it what the soil st the soil strength beneath the foundation momentarily comes down with the result that there is a tilt. So, you can see that even uh, because of this you have a tilted structure in India, but then uh, one needs to understand the phenomenon of liquefaction and uh, how to stabilize them to see that uh, the structure is back to its position like whether it is uh, acceptable tilt or near vertical to see that uh, this f uh, structure satisfies its function properly. So, the liquefaction and understanding and its uh, ground effect of uh, uh, ground improvement techniques in trying, trying to stabilize the uh, foundations is another important component of the ground improvement.
one needs to have a great deal of understanding of soil mechanics in this area and in fact uh, the ground improvement technique comes uh, uh, after the all the soil mechanics is taught and all the foundation engineering subject is taught because one should know how uh, to understand and the classify the soil soils and also how to understand the behavior under loading. Once you understand the behavior of soils under loading then you know how to design the foundations. So, there are different types of foundations one can think of shallow foundations, pile foundations, rafts, there are so many uh, developments in foundation engineering. So, one needs to un have the understanding of uh, soil mechanics and uh, foundation engineering to come out with proper foundation systems. But then uh, that alone is not sufficient nowadays because the foundations can be designed say for example, pile foundations are there, but if it can be replaced by a shallow footing uh, when they you have a treated ground th that becomes very cost effective. So, that is the reason that uh, you have uh, people have been exploring the use of uh, ground improvement techniques in uh, foundation engineering to a great extent because you have very uh, cost, cost effective uh, solutions to many of the foundation problems. Uh, what I would like to show here is that in the case of an uh, expansive soil you can see that the particular area you know as I just mentioned about a few minutes back the expansive soil which is called actually you know it is uh, in fact a black cotton soil in India it is called. But then um, expansive nature is because of the presence of Montmorillonite in its uh, clay structure. So, when the water is added to the system like in the during the rainfall or something. So, there is a tendency for the soil to heave and all the soil structure has a tendency it uh, imbibes lot of water and then, then the pavements on this could heave like you can see an example where you have a small mound here where it can just there is in the form of a um, uh, projection. So, one can see that uh, this is alright in a small place, but you know you have lot of uh, problems with this expansive soils in India. Uh, where people are not able to construct small uh, structures because the problem is the swell pressure that is associated with that. Normally, the expanse soils will have a swell pressure of about say for example, 100 or 200 kPa under fully uh, when you allow the water to uh, get in touch with expanse soil, but the load that you have to apply is only 50 kPa, but particularly in the case of canal linings. Uh, small buildings. So, definitely the small buildings and canal linings will have lot of problem with expansive soils. So, these expansive soils have to be treated in a proper way and uh, the problem otherwise you have lot of difficulties with uh, lot of damages essentially. In fact, uh, Texas in, in USA has lot of uh, studies on this and um, in India also we have lot of work being done on these lines. You will understand how to stabilize the expansive soil that is uh, one of the objectives here. So, the next one is as I just mentioned these expansive soils also have a tendency to shrink like the in fact the variation of water contents in a soil is represented by its liquid limit and its plastic limit and shrinkage limit. So, the expansive soils because of uh, uh, their uh, ability to take lot of water the water content is going to be high. So, it can be as high as uh, 100 percent. Then uh, when it dries completely dries it can go down to a shrinkage limit it can be as low as 10 percent. So, it is very risky like yeah at 10 percent it dries up totally then the buildings you have lot of cracks in fact you have uh, in Ananagar in Chennai and many other places uh, expansive soils are quite common and you see that uh, this is a serious issue particularly when a um, lot of dry seasons are there there is a drought season and uh, the water everybody wants water at the stage and even trees also want water. So, with the result that the soil water is taken from uh, the soil and then the soil does not have any water. So, the water content is close to its shrinkage limit. So, what happens is that under these influences you have lot of uh, shrinkage problems and this is essentially because the soil has big variations water content can be 100 and it can be 10 also which is something that one needs to uh, take care of it. So, what we do sometimes in this cases is that add some uh, treatment like you know add some sort of lime and other things and where the water content could come down the liquid limit water content from 100 can come down to 50 and the shrinkage limit can uh, come down to 20. So, with that the water content range is something like 50 minus 20 which is 30 percent as opposed to 90 percent in the previous case. So, 
that is what we do that is what is essentially a ground implement technique of course, we will go through some of the techniques in a much detailed way. I thought I will just cover give an idea flavor of what we are going to study in, in this subject. Then there is another uh, problem soil which is called collapsible soil. This collapse occurs because normally the soil is partly saturated in the sense the soil has air water and uh, so we do not say that if the soil is fully saturated we sa it has only water, but when we say that it is uh, partially saturated air is there. So, when you add water due, due to compaction or because of the rain water comes in contact with that the negative pore pressure or the uh, air water air present in the soil disappears and then that uh, there is a collapse of the soil structure. So, what happens is that there is a breakdown of the structure with the result that there is a uh, whatever if you have suppose the soil is supposed to be a collapsible there is a problem that you have lot of uh, build, uh, differential settlements in the foundations. Collapse can also occur because of loss of cementation bonds. Uh, some some uh, collapsible soils beyond some loading they tend to collapse because if the loading is higher than the uh, bond strength at which they have been uh, formed. So, definitely if you are going to higher uh, go up uh, go for higher loads then definitely collapse occurs. There are also some uh, specific clay structure in the sense that if the soil is more open and it has uh, tendency for a uh, lot of compression particularly if the sand content is going to be little higher and then uh, cementation bonds or uh, the strength is little lower then the possibility is that collapse can occur because of uh, loss of saturation as well as loss of cementation bonds. So, in fact, in uh, some areas in Rajasthan this is a problem and there are some problems that uh, people have studied that this is one area uh, that could be really uh, serious. You will see another classical example here it is a, a slope failure it is called a landslide in fact, uh, we are not new to this landslides in India, particularly all whole of Himalayas have this landslides and um, this is another example. This is actually a land is a slow failure in uh, some of the uh, water supply tanks for which you have an earthen embankment. Actually, the water is being stored here. This is in one of the places in uh, uh, Sindhanoor in Karnataka, where when water is uh, when during the f uh, when the water is completely full there is no problem but when the water is supplied to the people the water withdraws water is withdrawn and the soil is also uh, along with that the soil is also there is a collapse so we call this as a slow failure so this is a serious problem in many cases the uh, landslides then uh, many slow failures occurred in india and the slope failure is a classical problem the uh, problem of landslides in uh, Nilagiris, uh, in uh, Tirumala then uh, Himalayas these are all well known these are all called we call it slope failures and there is a need to perfect and uh, understand how these slopes can be stabilized using ground improvement techniques. This is what we are going to learn today or not today in this course. Uh, I just gave a uh, small introduction to liquefaction earlier where uh, when we are talking about the Kandla port trust building uh, this is actually what happens you can see that there is a boiling boils in uh, uh, this uh, on the earth you know in one place you see a small a tiny hole um, where actually then the other one is you have water just oozing out of the ground this is immediately after the earthquake of Buj in 2001 in Ahamda in close to uh, uh, Gandhi Dam near Aham in the in, uh, in Gujarat state where because of the earthquake occurrence uh, such a high load the sand material which is in in situ could not take it and the you know whatever is the water that is present there it just is ejecting out. So, what happens is that under those conditions the strength of the soil is very less we are uh, familiar with uh, what is called quicksand condition where uh, the material can get in suck get sucked in. So, that that happens because the earthquake force is so high and it is the water, water is not 
allowed to uh, is not uh, able to come out. So, under that conditions if you have any building also it gets totally into the system of the soil. In fact, uh, Chang Dam one of the dams uh, in Gujarat that failed is a classic case on which uh, it has it was founded on leg fibre materials and uh, it totally sank into the ground fortunately it has been rehabilitated now and now it is satisfactory. They have used some ground improvement techniques to uh, use that uh, area uh, rehabilitate that area and then reconstruct the whole dam this is one uh, classic example. This is another classic case of uh, uh, soft soils in fact, you can see that the uh, disturbance sampling disturbance in, in the case of undisturbed soil uh, it is able to take lot of load like you can see 0 0.5 all that uh, uh, loads in you can say an undisturbed sample, but then the, you just bit a disturb a bit then it becomes like a liquid this is something very unusual as I just mentioned in my previous uh, slide the bonds cementation bonds are there they can take care of load as long as the load is less than the cementation bond uh, strength. But the moment the cementation bonds are exceeded then it becomes like a liquid so it just you can see this. So, this is a very problematic area problem and we call this as uh, sensitive soils in fact uh, many of the places in uh, Kerala and all these uh, places you know they belong to this category we call it uh, we try to call in terms of uh, what you call sensitivity of the soil which is defined as undisturbed strength of the soil divided by remoted strength of the soil and uh, the sensitivity can be as high as 50 like in undisturbed state if you can uh, really do not disturb it too much it can be 50 times stronger than the remoted condition but uh, it is very tricky so it can just become a liquid. So, this is actually in uh, Canada and many places it is there even in India the sensitivity is of the order of 10 or 5 or it could be 2 to 10, but one should really do lot of uh, uh, detailed work on assessment of uh, field uh, behavior and uh, lab behavior. So, that this is understood in a better term in a uh, so that infrastructure can be constructed on soft soils in a proper manner. Other problem with the soft soils is that they have lot of settlements in fact, uh, the Kerala soft soil is so uh, notorious that you know the length of the piles is going to be very high in fact, people have been still doing that and then they are not using much of the ground improvement techniques a bit are being used, but then there is a lot of scope for bigger um, operations in uh, many of the coastal regions in India whether right from Calcutta to um, Mumbai you know all of the coastal areas need to be handled in a proper manner because the soil in these cases is very soft and uh, the shear strength is low then the settlements are going to be large all these things are issues are there. So, it is very important that we should be able to handle some of these uh, problems in a proper way using ground improvement techniques that is one thing. So, some of the alternatives that we have for example, you have the you have to when you think of ground improvement techniques what we understood was that yes to some extent ground improvement techniques are required and uh, then when that becomes very important we have to look at what are the ways that uh, one can think of or the what are the strategies. So, when a project encounters difficult foundation conditions like you are trying to construct a road or a building what are the solutions. So, you have an expansive soil uh, are you going to construct a road on an expanse soil? The problem would be that the moment you construct an expanse soil after two seasons all the pavement is just it gets curved up and uh, you are treated as a very bad engineer we do not want that. So, some of the solutions would be that avoid the particular site is it possible to avoid that area like you know the alignment of the road itself can be in a different uh, direction. Of course, most of the time uh, that is not possible nowadays because you would like to reach to all sites and see that on the way if you can use ground improvement techniques then uh, you are able to use our uh, area properly. So, the other way is design the plant structure say for example, uh, your uh, payment payment it can be uh, uh, the uh, the plant uh, the it can be flexible structure or rigid structure 
So, there are two systems here say for example, particularly in the case of buildings one can say that the structures can be very flexible in the sense that they can take care of the different settlements that occur like if there is a small movement that, an, that can occur in a foundation that gets transferred to the building and if the building can uh, take care of that uh, movement then is the structure is flexible. For example, the, the reinforced earth wall is a standard example we will see that later, but then the it is very important that the some of these um, RE walls you know they are all uh, f flexible structures one should uh, you, you could see that they are able to replace the rigid structures like rigid retaining walls in a big way in India. Like for all the flyovers nowadays you have only uh, flexible structures made of RE walls compared to rigid walls where you either you have to go for uh, counterfoot retaining walls or uh, cantilever walls and then the cost is going to be huge. So, here what we are doing is design the plant structure either flexible or rigid rigid means you know you have to make uh, very thick sections and uh, see that the even the settlements that are there are really not uh, they do not influence the actual for the structure. So, the thickness of the foundation will be so huge that uh, whatever small movements that occur in the soils may not really impact the foundation in the actual structure. So, this is what we see of course, this is another the many of the alternatives uh, people have been looking at uh, the other one is remove and replace suitable soils. In fact, uh, people have been using say for example, if the expansive soil is only of 1 meter thick deposit replace it anyhow you are going to have 1 meter or 1 or say for example, 1 and a half meter thickness everywhere it is there you are trying to even there our road thickness is about 1 meter or 1 and a half me, 0.8 meters or something like that. So, when you are trying to do that just go ahead and replace the whole expansive soil area and then put this regular uh, material what you want. So, removing and replacement is something sometimes is okay, uh, but then it is not easy all the time because again you have the same soil next to that it may create some more additional problems. So, other best way is to attempt to modify existing ground in fact, this is where the ground improvement uh, techniques come into picture and uh, the uh, in a significant way one can use the exist the modify the existing ground uh, to what you want the performance in terms of I want only very sh uh, uh, few mm of settlement instead of 100 mm settlements. So, one can really use some uh, modifiers or reinforcement and change the state of the existing ground and see that the ground is improved and uh, one can use it in a very confident manner. So, you have lot of techniques for this that we will see. The beauty of this techniques is that the foundation cost is cheaper like as I just mentioned uh, why you are this ground improvement techniques required is that as I just mentioned uh, instead of providing thicker foundations or uh, reinforced at the reinforced concrete foundations you are providing thinner sections. In fact, sometimes you are eliminating total concreting which is something very unique particularly in a foundation system if you are uh, reducing a number of piles or removing the possibility of piles itself which is a very good uh, beginning because you know uh, we are now nowadays talking about uh, the use of saving of some of the materials like steel and concrete because they are all uh, going to be very expensive. So, we try to say that one can come out with cost effective technologies or methods for foundation design itself. Another point is that the effect of contaminated soils in fact, uh, nowadays uh, with uh, increased uh, demand on the public uh, infrastructure contaminated soils do uh, have been existing and they need to be uh, used in a proper way. So, the contaminated soils should not influence our buildings like if there is a soil that is contaminated any water that goes into it should not come to your found your area and then create problems like you know say for example, the um, underground water tank of your building. If it is close to a contaminated soil one should see that there is a proper uh, system lining system in which the contaminated soils are there only they, they do not um, allow the water or the seepage to come to your area and see that uh, 
the soil is contaminated. So, what we want is that the contaminated soils should be properly handled and containment is possible, containment of the effect of contaminated soils is possible using ground improvement techniques. The other important thing is nowadays people have been talking about sustainability in uh, uh, engineering design. The sustainability is something that one needs to understand in a bigger way because as I just mentioned nowadays with a lot of uh, stress on uh, construction infrastructure you are using lot of steel and concrete and many of these materials. So, if you try to minimize the quantity of steel and concrete uh, the amount of energy saved say for example, they say that uh, 1 uh, meter cube of concrete uh, releases uh, so many CO2 emissions or if you are able to save 1 cubic meter of concrete in construction it helps in carbon credits. So, this is a thought number days and uh, one can use the ground improvement techniques in a very effective way in this manner. There are some more things like even use of natural materials like say for example, if I am talking about a, a road in a rural area one can use uh, bamboo as a reinforcement and also coir as some sort of reinforcement and one can use some cost effective techniques at least say for example, in rural areas, rural areas where the soil is very soft marshy still people have to live with and need to have lot of good facilities whether in the form of roads, buildings and all that. So, ground improvement techniques are a significant tools there and I am sure that um, there is a lot of scope for use of the ground improvement techniques in sustainability engineering. So, I would like to just give some idea of what type of techniques you have and what are the various mechanisms. Uh, we will take it in a detailed way, but I would like to just give a capsule of what can be done. One is the compaction, the ground improvement technique can be uh, one of the techniques is a compaction. See the thing is we are all used to you know the soil is not very good, but you know you bring a road roller and then compact it. So, the compaction has to be uh, very good. So, compaction is a means of uh, improving the strength properties as I just mentioned the soil is loose so it will not have enough strength like normally the strength of the soil is expressed in terms of the cohesion and friction uh, of the soil and the cohesion and friction properties will improve if you compact the sample that is what we see in most of the road work compaction is a normal one because we know that uh, once you get a standard Proctor uh, curve from the laboratory one can uh, specification give the, give the specifications to the contractors uh, dealing with the road work to tell that this is the compaction that you should achieve in the field. So, once the compaction is done and we expect that the strength is less the settlements are less and then you have many varieties of techniques here also one is called shallow compaction where you only compact up to 1 or 2 meters and uh, deep compaction. So, for example, if you want to compact 10 meters how do you do that? So, these techniques we will discuss this is uh, under the process called uh, compaction. The another way is dewatering, dewatering means actually the soil is uh, has uh, strength of the soil is very less when water content is high. If there is lot of water say for example, that is a problem in coastal areas you have lot of water, water uh, next to the area and the soil is also very soft. So, it has a water content of 100 percent. If you remove that water content to some level by some what you call there is some technique called preloading and all that accelerated consolidation. We consolidate the soil. So, we consolidate soil what it means is that uh, the strength will be improved if the moment you remove the water from uh, soil the possibility is that the strength gets improved. So, one can consolidate in a proper manner and uh, get whatever you need like this uh, dewatering is a standard technique uh, people have been using like removal of uh, water using some dewatering machines or applying some loads. So, that water that is uh, in present in the clay structure slowly comes out. Then uh, we have what is called reinforcement, reinforcement means like say for example, a typical to a, 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 an operation where if one of the bones is not working properly and if there is a breakage you add some sort of an iron uh, material like uh, some sort of a uh, 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 reinforcement we call it uh, some uh, member which can really uh, help you in uh, putting the proper connection. 
So, the reinforcement is something that we will see that it has an excellent uh, advantage here and uh, so what we do here is that sometimes you may compact yeah there is an improvement and you may do dewatering there is some improvement, but you need more improvement uh, you want say for example, the you know, bearing capacity like of the soil is 10 ton per meter square because the soil is very soft. But uh, my building wants uh, you know the uh, the designer wants 30 ton per meter square. How do you get that? I cannot get from uh, the native soil because it is only 10 ton per meter square that is its capacity. Whatever I do I will not get beyond that I may put some sand on it and I mean I will not get more than that. So, what we do is that the reinforcement in the form of uh, steel strips, geo grids that we will see they can in influence the uh, simulator, simulator RCC uh, reinforced concrete we what is called reinforced earth or reinforced soil. We use the reinforced soil technique in a very big way and uh, uh, improve the soil behavior. In fact, whatever you see in the case of uh, flyovers uh, which has uh, metallic strips or geo grids is only because of this. Then another important thing is admixtures or grouting. In fact, uh, when the soil is poor what we do is that we add something like say for example, there is an expansive soil as I just said uh, 100 percent is the liquid limit then add a bit of lime uh, the liquid limit comes down to 60 percent. So, what it means is that you add some uh, chemical agent it can be even physical agent also we will see that like many of the admixtures like chemical uh, can be chemical uh, stabilizers can be added physical stabilizers uh, can be added like say for example, flash. If the expansive soil is there you add flash because flash also has the same uh, benefit, uh, but then it is uh, the effect is mechanical. In, in the case of lime it is chemical in the case of uh, flash it is mechanical. So, some people also use grouting which is something that is also very good like as I just mentioned um, the, uh, the grouting is nothing but a cement slurry mix at uh, some specified uh, water content where you can just say for example, strengthen the systems using some uh, uh, like you know the uh, putting lot of grout say for example, as I just mentioned the case of a, a, a sinkhole formation cast deposits. So, for example, that is very tricky. So, what we do is that when you have a sinkhole uh, there is no way that uh, you can handle it or you can you can you can't reach it. So, but then if uh, the sinkhole is within your loaded area what we do is that we grout it we grout so that uh, definitely the grout fills up the hole that is formed because of the sink and we periodically observe how is it penetrating how is it moving because the problem with uh, some of the grouting techniques is that if there is a hole formed somewhere we do not know where it is ending. So, one should be very clear that the grouting is done in a proper way and uh, it is uh, contained in a proper way and uh, the loaded area that is there has the effect of this uh, grouting material or the grouted material. Then, so as I just mentioned uh, the reinforcement is something that is very useful and uh, the uh, here this the soil response is improved by interaction between the soil and inclusion. The because of the uh, previous case as I just mentioned the both uh, compaction and uh, the, consol the consolidation or dewatering there is a change in water content. What we do is we, we change the soil state like you know the soil is initially loose we compact it. So, so that soil becomes dense or we consolidate so that the soil becomes dense or less uh, it has less water content. Here there is a compacted sample already and I cannot change much. So, I want to improve it. So, I put a reinforcement and um, the reinforcement will act in a way that when the load is applied there are some interaction between the soil and uh, the reinforcement the that reinforcement uh, the takes care of the effect of uh, friction between the reinforcement and the soil takes care of the additional load. We will see those designs later and uh, then we have the improving period actually the improved improving period depends on the life of inclusion. In fact, uh, one can say that uh, one can use uh, temporary reinforcement and permanent uh, reinforcements also 
like uh, say for example, geogrids are uh, permanent reinforcement whereas, materials like uh, jute geotextiles which are biodegradable. So, sometimes uh, in fact, I have used it uh, in some particular uh, projects where in uh, we have central rodage institute it has been able it has been possible to use the coir jute geotextiles uh, for a construction of an embankment. So, here the change of uh, state of soil is not uh, there like you know the water content is same, but at the same time the effect of improvement is because of the interaction of the soil and reinforcement. And uh, this can be done for many uh, cases of soils like say for example, uh, right from uh, sandy soils to clay soils also. In fact, uh, friction is uh, less in the case of uh, soil uh, the clay soils because the friction between the soil and reinforcement is less. We try to uh, classify uh, the or denote the effect in terms of the friction angle uh, or the interfacial friction angle we call it uh, that is between the friction the soil and the reinforcement that is normally two thirds of the phi of the soil. Like if the friction angle is uh, 30 degrees for sand and when you put this uh, reinforcement into the sand two thirds of phi is what we take and it can be even 0.75 also. So, 0.75 times the friction angle. So, it has been one of the widely used techniques. Then uh, admixtures ground as I just said here again the there is a change in soil state there is a, uh, a change in soil state. So, and then you can have short term and long term improvements are also possible because uh, this is another important because it depends on the type of additive you add and its effect long term and short term performances. So, as I just mentioned the uh, compaction is something very useful it is a long term uh, effect it is there and um, this can be used for sandy silty and gravelly soils and dewatering is something that as I just mentioned um, it can be mostly useful for clay soils because essentially sandy soils uh, there are initially dry and the dry permeability of the sandy soils is quite uh, high. So, it is there is no problem, but dewatering is required in the case of clay soils because um, they are poor in uh, permeability like the permeability values are quite low. So, what we should do is that the permeability values being so low we should accelerate the uh, consolidation process which we have varieties of techniques like band drains and sand drains many things. So, uh, one can use this some of these techniques to dewater either in terms of the applying load or even uh, creating suction. This particular uh, table gives what type of uh, uh, techniques are ok in what type of soils. So, for example, you can see that on the serial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 we have mentioned organic soil we have mentioned clay, volcanic clay soil, highly plastic clay, lowly plastic clay, silty soil, sandy soil, gravelly soil. These are all the different types of soils that one can in, in, uh, encounter and uh, you can see that the red mark shows that uh, the say so for example, compaction alone. Uh, for example, you cannot do much for organic soil or organic soil or the plastic clay you know compaction may not uh, really be so useful. Yes, it is uh, marginally improved, but then you can see that if you add reinforcement admixtures and dewatering say for example, organic I will take the example of organic soil reinforcement uh, particularly is uh, you add some admixtures for organic uh, soils put reinforcement also dewy water because the areas are in uh, marshy conditions marshy areas. So, all of these three things may work that is what I meant. In the case of volcanic soil what it means is that say the volcanic soils are something that is also very uh, interesting properties they have they are all there in Japan and many places where you have volcanoes and um, reinforcement proper uh, function is very helpful and if you add admixtures also they are going to be helpful compaction you know the soils are something they are peculiar in nature, but uh, so we should very difficult to judge their uh, properties based on compaction or improvement. So, we use all these techniques whether reinforcement admixtures and dewatering to improve organic soils, volcanic clay soils, highly plastic clays, lowly plastic clays. 
But in the case of uh, silty soil or a sandy silt or something, one can use all of them. Reinforcement can be effective, admixtures can be effective, compaction can be effective, uh, dewatering can be effective, all this. So, what I meant was that the, 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 um, uh, one should use a rational uh, choice here. Say so now gravel, gravel yes to some extent um, one should use proper admixtures you know even in gravel soils and dewatering of course is not effective in both sandy soils and uh, gravelly soils that is one important thing one should know. This is just an idea to uh, idea that uh, uh, there could be there are many types of soils what one can have there are many types of techniques one, one should use in a scientific manner uh, all these uh, techniques because otherwise one has a lot of difficulties because if you use a wrong technique uh, in uh, then the problem is uh, the purpose is not served. So, the contractor will have a problem the project gets delayed and uh, it is a very big risk one needs to take. So, one should really use uh, proper precautions and uh, develop proper ground improvement techniques understanding the soil behavior properly and also see the suitability of the admixtures or the compaction dewatering reinforcement properly in a particular project and come out with proper alternative otherwise you will have a big risk. So, uh, one can classify the uh, ground improvement techniques or the modification techniques in a number of ways what I just gave you was a capsule of what can be um, handled like, but then uh, we need more details on this in this course. So, uh, for, a, for a in a technical way people have uh, modified the uh, classified some of the techniques uh, like mechanical modification like you are only trying to modify by mechanical means. What it means is that uh, the uh, road roller what you see is a mechanical means. So, you try to improve the ground using the mechanical means uh, that we call it uh, mechanical uh, modification. In fact, deep compaction is also mechanical and uh, we will see cover in detail some of the techniques. Then uh, hydraulic modification you are only trying to remove the water and uh, in this uh, consolidation. So, we call it hydraulic modification. Uh, in fact, varieties of techniques are there as I just mentioned we have prefabricated vertical drains, dewatering techniques and uh, all that. So, in uh, both mechanical modification and hydraulic uh, modification there are many uh, methods of doing it which we will be able to uh, discuss case by case and uh, see that uh, uh, how they can be uh, implemented in a particular project. Then physical and chemical modification is something that uh, like as I just mentioned. Um, you add a bit of fly ash or a bit of sand in a clay. If you add a bit of sand or a fly ash, definitely the liquid limit of the uh, soil will come down. Why I am referring to the liquid limit is that that is one of the properties that can give some idea of the properties of the, the, uh, the, the behavior of the soil. Like if the limit liquid limit is going to be very high, say for example, Cochin soil, it is about 116 percent. We call what you call Kutanadu clay is there. The water content is about 116 percent and it is quite high. So, what we do one can uh, physically modify in the sense add some admixtures like sand, fly ash, any other material like a dust material that is available and uh, you know which are inert actually this uh, sand, fly ash and all are comparatively inert compared to clay because the clays have negatively charged surface particles on them. And uh, when you add uh, when there is lot of um, negative uh, the, the, the charge is going to be high the problem is that they take lot of water. So, that way if you can modify the physical state by some uh, additives then it is nice. Then the second one is a chemical modification as I just mentioned a um, lot of additives could be added in this uh, particular case where uh, it is possible to uh, enhance the response of the ground using chemical modification and um, modification by inclusions as, as I said um, uh, inclusion of the reinforcement like if you include the reinforcement what happens the uh, we will discuss the fundamentals of that it will increase uh, the forces that are uh, resisting the uh, disturb, disturbing forces and it will also add to the, the 
uh, it will reduce the disturbing forces. So, it has two on components it will uh, reduce the disturbing forces it will add to stabilizing uh, forces. The other one is the confinement it affects it gives a pseudo confinement in the sense that actually we have seen that um, if you increase the load on the soil uh, there is a confinement effect is there. But then that confinement can be brought out of brought about by putting the soil in some confined manner. So, one can increase the strength of the soil in some proper manner and uh, get the improvement. So, one can uh, get the benefit of all of these uh, properties by you know combining mechanical modification like compaction using reinforced earth then consolidating say the for example, the reinforced soil is a very classical example where you have to use uh, road rollers for compaction of the backfill and also put the reinforcement and also confine the soil. Actually the thing is that because of the confinement like particularly you see must have seen in the many of the RE walls there is a facing. The facing is required to provide the confinement effect of course, the reinforcement is there, but then between the uh, two uh, reinforcements the soil has a tendency to fall. So, if you put a facing which could be above 200 mm uh, thick uh, RCC panel then one can say that uh, the um, confinement effect is introduced. Uh, and then physical modification also could be done particularly in the case of uh, say for example, expansive soils uh, which I tried in one of the cases where you can add for the expansive soil uh, lime as well as flash. So, lime makes a chemical modification whereas, a uh, flash or a sand can make a chem uh, the physical modification one can make a chemical modification and one can also make a physical modification with the result that the problem with the soil is not uh, very severe. So, one can use many of these uh, techniques in combination and see that uh, the you have a proper ground movement techniques used and uh, also see that you get the maximum benefit out of them. Thank you.